just waiting for people to come in. So make yourself comfortable. Welcome. Yeah, we have a nice good science group coming in. And I'm imagining most of you are connecting from sort of Europe and America. And if you'd like to say where you're from in the chat and say hello, um, we'd love to hear it. That everyone's going to be muted um, initially because you know we just need to manage, given that it's a large group, um, sort of audio and, and visual stuff. But there will be a chance later where we can ask questions and it'll be interactive. So we're looking forward to, to talking with you more there. And it's going to be practical as well. It's going to be practical, which is great. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get a real true flavor of what we do. I mean, people see what, you know what I mean? Like Chris is like, we do our clearings and people don't really know what we're doing, what we're dealing with, all the, all the different nuance, everything that we are finding, clearing, unraveling. It's like, no one has a clue. So this is a little bit of a behind the scenes clue, which is very yeah. cool. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, so, you know, I think I'll go ahead and just share how, how this work actually came about. I mean, I do want to say that, you know, there's many, many modalities out there. There's a lot of shamanism, there's energy healers, energy workers, all of that, okay? The difference, though, is the ability to track and find the core is what's very different, okay? People, oftentimes people will see something and I think that's it, and then they'll start working and healing, clear, whatever. But it's not it, okay? And, and the ability to track is vital, it's key. That's what happened for me was I started discovering that, oh, there's so much more than just initial. Like I've been doing this work for, now. I'm going on 38 years now, and I began this, really, I began on my own personal journey, and I discovered the surrender to emotions, and I discovered that by losing the mind and going into all these deep places that energy started to unwind. And I worked with thousands and thousands of people and unwinding that emotional energy. So, you know, it's like this whole tracking and witnessing and observing and practicing what really clears it so that it's done, like done. And Chris is, Chris can, he can attest to that because that's why he's here. That's why he's teaching. Okay. I'll let you tell that in just a moment, Chris. I think that's really, it's incredible, you know, seriously. But for me, it was all about ending my own suffering, of course, and, and then the discovering of all the interferences. So two times in my life, I've done an isolation thing for four years each time. I was 19 the first time, and then, I don't, and then it was in 2006 the second time, each for four years. And that last one in 2006, that's when everything changed. My work changed. I started understanding. I started really seeing the interferences, the blockages, the things that are affecting people. And if I, I mean, people would, if I told people what, what's really happening, people would think I'm nuts. I'm crazy. That can't be. Okay. But we have all these interferences. And if you don't get all the pieces, it's not over. And people don't have all the pieces. They don't know all the pieces okay that's what we bring that's what we do it you know spiritual acceleration that's what foundations is all about it's the pieces that you're not going to get anywhere else and it's the ability to really understand and track and find and then waking up to all the different places and things that are actually affecting people and once you open that up then you can start finding it oftentimes people don't see these things because it's not in their awareness not in mm -hmm. their consciousness they have no clue what to look for. So, this, you know, this is what we do. We teach you how to do the most incredible work on the planet. Chris, you want to just share a little bit about what happened for you? <laughs> I uh, love this. Yeah, no, it's a real, it's, it's, it's been a real privilege, as you say, to go behind the scenes. That's how I look at this work. It's like life looks like it's one way and you're born into it. And here we are, and we've got all of this suffering and pain. And it looks like, okay, here we are, and then we die. And then actually, as you begin to wake up and go deeper, you realize that there is, there's a lot going on. And actually, we've been here before many times. The things and themes we're working on, we've actually been struggling and working on for many, many lifetimes. And there's divine intention for us to wake up, to really wake up to our nature as love and awareness and light, and to transform and let go. And, and the sort of name we chose for this webinar is Breaking Free of Limitations. 
And what Bonnie showed me was really that the limitations are the path. By and get, rather than trying to run away from what's going on inside of you, we actually want to go there. We really want to explore the deepest pain and places where you cannot go, where you are frightened to walk, where there is stuff going on that you don't know how to handle. And Bonnie, your work and your teaching and treatment gave me a way to go to go there. And you, you because Bonnie holds a particular light that can go into the into the sort of the the most pure place of separation or even evil, and still manifests. Uh, awakening um that was yeah it's a it's it's like a transmission as well and so by learning and, and picking that up you gain the capacity to go to these dark places and to deal with what you need to 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 bring freedom and liberation and um i was i was such a mess when i met bonnie it was pure like um i don't know if the right word is like it's just what life decided to do with me I was, a, I was a total mess. I heard about Bonnie's work from other students of hers who were powerful teachers in their own right. Um, the amazing Susan Carlson was a student with Bonnie and she was a mentor to my friend. And um, I was a real mess. And, and Bonnie sort of cut through sort of eight years of depression and I started to go, wow, what's that? And I knew I want to learn this. And, and, um, and this is my teacher. I remember having that sense. Um, so yeah, the foundations is, is it's, it's an incredibly deep process of transformation. And it's one where we actually learn and gain the skills of particularly tracking energy, really being able to track into different dimensions, different layers of the energy system, different realms, um, journeying, journeying to other places, planets, um, journeying deep into sort of really out there stuff, ETs, and where sort of this darkness comes from an interdimensional level, as well as inside this kind of time and space kind of universe. And we also learn um, surrender, I would say, is, is a big part of the path that Bonnie's shown me is that we really need to, we need to take action and we also need surrender. And they become part of a dance. It's the same thing, kind of a yin and a yang. Um, and, and we're going to be looking in some of these today. Today, we're going to introduce some of the concepts and sort of basic methods that we teach in foundations. But today is one hour and the foundations is 10 months. So we're going to try and give you a taste and actually a method to be able to encounter and work with things that are holding you back. And for those that are interested, we'll take you, you know, we'll talk a little bit about the foundations training and, and how you can really develop your ability and capacity to, to track and clear and release energy um, so that you can move forward in your life and help help other people to do the same. And we'll talk a bit more about that at the end, but some of this will be practical. Um, yeah, I mean, this work is extraordinary, Bonnie. There's nothing like it. Um, and is there anything more you want to say about sort of how we do things different or what's, what's, what's yeah. Yeah, okay. I, do, I, do, I was remembering something, but I just want to bring this because it's really important. So back in the day when I used to have the Renaissance Center, it was, the, it was based on clearing the emotional body, okay? Massive workshops, roll people up, get them in these places and miracles would happen. But when I went to the desert, that's when that changed, okay? I saw things and understood things and then started working to unravel. Now we can unravel a lot of a person's emotions that you don't even have to go into. I mean, how cool is that, really? And yes, there are some emotions that people will still have to go into, but when you clear out all the massive emotional energy frequency that's being contributed by bringing discarnates, implants, devices, mechanisms, other things, other people's emotions, other people's beliefs. And, you know, you're trying to unravel something that is not just yours, but by clearing out what is not yours and by clearing out some of the emotions that are yours, your, your journey into those emotions aren't going to take you years or months or lifetimes to unravel, okay? So that, that it just accelerates everything. And that piece right there, that changed my entire work and after and after i moved you know went to the desert for those four years in 2006 everything changed now we're doing what we're doing mm -hmm. so i just want to bring that because it isn't just about okay you're gonna you know we're moving energy and you got all these emotions yeah you got them but the truth is is we can move massive amounts of those emotions and you won't even have to go there it's pretty cool yeah yeah no it's an amazing it's an amazing approach that's an amazing approach and it just goes deeper that's the amazing thing is it just it just keeps on going deeper and deeper and unveiling sort of deeper layers and new new realities of the work so it feels like it's still evolving and that your work is still sort of accelerating and 
getting more powerful. Yeah. 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 So I, I'm sure this is kind of personal, but people don't under, know this, but in my, the last couple of years, I've been truly wanting the desire was to, is to have unconditional love for everybody. I don't care if you're the evil, bad, bad person or light being, whatever. I don't care. I just want that heart open. And so in that journey, massive things have happened, you know, I mean, I'm not there. I don't live in a state of unconditional love for everybody. And, and yet that's my desire. So in that asking, guess what happens? Whatever is not in me that can hold unconditional love is in my face. <laughs> of yeah. course. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the journey, you know, the journey of the soul is, is to truly be our authentic self. That's what it's really about. People often say, what's my purpose? You know, we have a purpose here. Well, your true purpose, the absolute purpose, is to open your heart and share the gift of you. That means you're not operating from a wounded place, from a shattered, broken place, from a misperception, victim place, the blame, blame, blame game, none of that. The heart is open and you're expressing yourself clearly the truth of you, the gift of you. And that's what we're here to do. After that, you'll find what you're, you know, what you love doing, what you're you know, bring into the world. Like, for example, what I do, this is what I bring. It's not who I am. It's, you know, is it my life purpose? No, my life purpose truly is open that heart up, open that heart and be authentically real and true at all times. Thank you for sharing. Thank yeah. you for sharing it. Um, yeah, there's no, you've said it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's about people. It's about, oh, I, I don't want to say something else. 1984 is when I started seeking enlightenment. Why did I start seeking enlightenment? Because I had an experience of being fully enlightened. I had it. Then I knew. Then I began seeking. Then I woke up to, oh, let me check the world. Anybody here on the planet truly 100% enlightened? Oh, no. Okay, fine. Gave it up. So the next best thing became liberation. So that's what I offer, liberation, to end one's suffering. And that's what we do. Yeah. All right, Chris, go ahead, take it away. I think we're ready for. And, and right. I just want to, you know, I just want to say, Chris is an amazing teacher. He's an amazing being. I just love this guy. I love him. <laughs> we have a lot of fun. We have yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, um, we're going to begin working with the energetics that we we learn we learn in the foundations course, and today we're going to do. Um, we're going to make this into a, a shorter process of um, three steps that you can use to work with to work with yourself, to work with your um, what's holding you back. And the first stage in this process is to we want to connect with the light. What does this mean? We want to connect with the 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 reality of life. Actually, the light is really the reality of divinity arising that's manifested all of creation and the light is sort of like it's arising from pure divinity and then it's densifying down into all of the fabric of reality the fabric of creation all universes all spaces all times and becoming denser and denser and denser until we end up with physicality and we are trying to connect with the pure power of divinity itself which expresses itself as light and awareness and love and to bring that through to as a as an energy and an actual force which can transform can transform stuck conditioning it can start transform and burn away illusion past lives we can use it to release entities discarnates dark forces things that are stuck in our system attached to our wounding and so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to connect with the light and I'm going to sort of facilitate this energetically with the group. It's, it's sort of the intention of this webinar. Um, and you can opt out if you wanted. I'd probably just sort of tune out, but I'm going to try and bridge everyone into this as we go. So just get comfortable. And we're going to be playing with this a few times, so don't don't get too uptight about it. We just do it. That's the thing that Bonnie has taught me really well, is that you can do this. You can do this. So So do it. So get comfy, soften your eyes away from the screen, come back to your body. We're just gonna just gonna meet the group. And just be really just take a few breaths into your body as we connect in the group field.
First, you're muted. Oh, there you go. So everyone be in your buddy. Just taking a few breaths while I connect us as a group field. Bringing that through. Good. Okay, so somewhere inside of you, in the deepest place of your heart, is the divine. And take a few breaths into the deepest place in your heart. Breathe yourself in to the core of your being where there's actually this divine spark, this divine place of love and light, where divinity meets you, the deepest place in your heart. Let your awareness touch there and just be willing to open. Be willing to open to the light. Breath in there. And see it beginning to happen in the group. Let's surrender there. As best you can. Deeper and deeper, letting go to divinity or love. Very nice. This is the place we're always trying to deepen into and to awaken through our work. And now we're going to take a trip, a journey up into the higher levels of the light. So as best you can, take your awareness, begin to follow the vibration of the, the group. We're going to start going up, so pop out. It's like you're lifting out of reality, out of this denser level of reality. We're going to travel up to the light. So let your awareness travel out of your body as if you're popping out the top of your head. And we're going to begin traveling through this sort of time space, which is made up of dense, dense divine webbing. And we're going to start popping out into the fifth dimension. Just do your best to travel upwards out of this density, lifting ourselves up higher and higher. We're beginning to travel towards the light and opening a, a sort of pathway to it, as if we're hopping out of time and space. To hop out of time and space, we have to pop out of a bubble of time and space. And that's where we need to sort of have the sense of lifting out. So we're going to take us now. <laughs> traveling up, traveling up out of this dimension to finer and finer levels. We begin to feel finer energies. Keep going, keep going, keep going up to the bright, 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 pure source divinity. Up, 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 up. We're just going past the seventh dimension. We're going higher, 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 higher. Start feeling the light and the subtle sort of sense of light and brightness. Keep going up. To pure divinity without form, without an energy body. We're just going up, 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 up. We're starting to bridge into the eighth dimension where the angels live, but we're going higher. Some of most of you are here. Just keep going up. Keep going up. There we go. And it's brighter. Keep aiming for that bright, pure, pure light. Just feels like home. There we go. We're getting there. One more hop into the tenth dimension. And then we're at pure divinity. Higher, higher, higher still. Let go of all sense of thought, all individuality. There we are. Now we're in the game. So just recognize and bask in this energy. Let yourself open to it completely. Surrender to the light. Dissolving into that. Let it touch you very deeply. To take away your wounding. <laughs> and remember this place. There's presence. And there's a divine sort of blueprint that is coming forward. Just recognize and feel that. a divine pattern of you without your suffering, without the knocks from life and past lives. An awakening and a transmission of this light that you can call upon and let that enter your being. You might feel it sort of working its way into your energetic spine 
densifying that. Good. And now let's go down from this place. Some of you don't want to, but you can return any time. And now we're going to go drop down to, not all the way back to our body, but down to that eighth dimension where the angels hang out, because that's really cool. So we're going to just guide the group down to this eighth dimensional realm of angelic consciousness, bringing feel yourself slightly popping under where we were in pure divinity to a feeling of unconditional love from angelic realm. And just see if you can tune into that, sort of try and bridge the group in. You, everyone has an angel that you may work with a lot. An angelic realm is a sort of layer where angelic beings sort of are living from and connecting to us from. There we go. We're beginning to bridge them more as a group. Notice and recognize angelic realms. See if you can let yourself connect with that and open your heart to that unconditional love and healing. It's very nurturing for our emotional system, this angelic kind of love. It may be working with you individually. I see it sort of going into different places where you're shut down from life. Just opening and softening. Good. Actually, stuff moving out from people's hearts. Very nice. Letting yourself fill up. And then say goodbye to angelic realm. You can come back here anytime. It's a real place. And your angel will always be working with you. You can develop a connection with. Now we're going to come back to our bodies. Let's go down, just return to your body, let yourself become more dense, feel where your body is, and then kind of bring your presence, sort of suck it in like a vacuum cleaner, into yourself, fully behind your eyes, fully into your body, letting yourself come back down to ground in your body. Feel for your bones, can feel a lot of you don't want to leave the angels, but we've got an agenda and we need to keep with the program. So feel for your bones, feel for your body and start bringing yourself down into your form. There'll be a recording of this so you can come back and use it as a sort of meditation. But for right now, I want you to feel for your spine, feel for your bones, feel for the core of your system, your central channel. And just bring your energy and consciousness all the way into you. Bonnie taught me that it's okay to go out as long as we return, but we do really want to return into our body because our life is here. We have manifested on a planet. We are evolving through the challenge of the planet into transforming our suffering and wounding to recognize, as Bonnie says, ourselves as unconditional love. And we need to be in our body to do that. So bringing yourself all the way back behind your eyes, take three deep breaths into your body, breathe into your bones, Breathe into your feet and grounding cord. Very nice. We'll let the group come back. Please come back to your bodies. So this is a this is part of the energetics of beginning to work with the light. We need to establish a connection with it. This is what Bunny taught me and teaches. And then we we actually work with this frequency of light. We don't want to use an energy of like some healing systems use a sort of universal energy, like Reiki is using a universal energy, sort of cosmic energy, and some energy systems are using sort of prana from life. And we want to use this divine light because it is better for what we're trying to clear and work on. And it goes deeper in a certain way into sort of deeper layers of, of wounding in our energy system in a way that other things won't. So we are connected with that space. And I'll just give you a couple of seconds to come back. We're going to try the next thing. So the next thing is being able to call upon this power, the power of the light. And this is what we want to do every time we're working with someone. We're calling this power into our being and around the person we're working on as a, as a sort of column of light. And then we're using it to clear and release the energy, the discarnates, the dark forces, the UFO stuff that we need to clear and get out of the way. And so we need to be able to really call upon this. And it's not something that you you can do it right now, but to develop this more strongly will take a deepening. So when Bonnie calls down the light, it is different than when I call down the light or when someone who hasn't done as much training calls down the light. It evolves your energy system and your being so that you can hold more of the light. That's That's part of the path. So even if you've done this with me before or with Bonnie before or in other healing systems, it's actually a capacity and a skill that you want to 
develop and develop more how much more of that can you can you bring down can you use can you surrender to and um actually it's it's the divine intention for you to use this energy for healing it's 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 actually what its intention is so we want to align with that so you've just been there to this place of pure divinity where this unconditional power of light and love and awareness is it's actually you we're just waking up to that piece by piece and now just by remembering it just by tuning in something in you is awake there something in you knows this place or, or has come from there really that's really where we come from now i want you to connect with that place with your awareness and call down the light to surround you to surround your system so connect with the light my awareness travels it connects and resonates with that place and then i call it down like a column of light to surround me and if i'm working with someone i'm calling it down to surround the person i'm working on let's do that now all together so use your intention connect to the light call it down around you call the light down around you call it down through you so the light is cascading through you like a waterfall like a powerful spotlight like a force a power of life power of the divine and then surrender to it the calling down is also a surrendering to it a surrender to be part of the light for it to use you for the light to use you good i can see people doing it that looks good but we want to we want to we want to amplify it more and we want to give you some practice so what I want you now to do is, to, as well as yourself, I want you to intend to call the light down for the whole group. And Bonnie and I are also going to be doing this. And so just you connect with the light and intend for it to come down around the whole group. Pushing out wounding, discarnates, beings, frequencies, waking them up to their true nature. <laughs> and surrender to the light, call it down and surrender to it. It is divinity, it is your true nature, it is the power of life and love and awareness. Good, now we're in the game and it will begin to pull up where you're stuck. So you might feel like a lot of um, screaming and dark places begin to wake up as well. So it could feel like very good and also it could bring things up and that's what we want. So bring down the light, surrendering to it letting that come through i can see it beginning to work deeper into everyone's chakra system I can see it working through your nadis your energy bodies I'm beginning to tune you to this frequency of light more and more surrendering to that letting it open yourself to the light letting all these pockets of wounding start opening up too so all of your emotional stuff you carry which is really past life stuff when entities discarnates dark forces you're opening those places up I'm going to blast them with the light. Good. So we are cooking. Now we've now we've got the gas on. We're connected with the light. This is the force of healing that we're going to use for healing for ourselves or for people in front of us. If we're, we're working as a healer or we want to help someone. And the next stage of really getting in the game with it's different if you're working with yourself or if you're working with someone else. But ultimately, I feel that there's a benefit to, do, to learning to do this, even though it's actually arguably, um, arguably you don't need to feel your feelings in order to clear them. But there is a benefit to be able to do that because it deepens you in, into the energy as well. And so what we're going to do now is... We're going to we're going to feel our stuff, and we're going to use this as the thing as a, as a way in because you're all working with yourself today. You're not really working with anyone else in the group. There's too many people here for me to get you to do work on each other. But in the foundations, you would learn to do that. So in the foundations training, we get you to work on everyone, and we get you to work on them in class and then in pods where there's maybe three of you, and then an accelerator supervising. So it's very it's very methodical training where you get a lot of time practicing tracking and then clearing someone else to really understand how you can how you can heal someone how you can find and track and discover what's going on for them where the discarnates entities where the dark forces are where their wounding is 
where the ET interference, where their past life ruining is, where their soul parts are, and then be able to really work with that as a healing system to, to change what's going on for them. But today we're just going to work with ourselves because that's the format of it and we don't have the foundation's training time. But what we're going to do is we're going to bridge into our emotional stuff. And I want you to pick an issue that's big for you. So it could be you know, what's in the way of unconditional love. It could be a trauma, an anxiety, a depression, something from your childhood that you never got over. It could be whatever you think's holding you back, whatever you think's holding you back. And if you're not sure what that is, just go inside and open to be open to feel whatever's there. That's a nice way in too. So you don't have to have an agenda. You can just be open to feel. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go in to our emotional system. And, and, and as part of that, we're also going to light up some entities and discarnates. But the, the place that those entities and discarnates hang out is in the emotions. So the emotions are the entry point for all the other layers of wounding because it's where things are typically most stuck personally for you as a personality. That's where you're stuck. And that stuckness resonates out into the different layers and fields of you and attracts in other things that hook into that. Discarnates, dark forces, alien interference, all of these different phenomena that happen and crystallize around that stuck place. So we want to recognize that place. And then once we can actually feel it, something can begin to open there. We're in the energy, then we can start doing clearing. So and also, it's worth saying that if you're working with someone else, getting them to drop in and feel their emotions lights up the energy more strongly. When Bonnie works, she's so experienced, she doesn't need her client to do that. The minute they start telling her about what's going on, she's already tracking all the things. But for a while, we want to get the person to really drop into how it makes them feel. And that makes the energy easier for us to track because suddenly there's life energy moving into those places. And we can track that psychically as they do. And we go, yes, there's that piece there are those discarnates. I can see they've got a past two past lives involved in this issue and there's some alien interference. And we, we get those components and then we go after and clear all those things, check back in to see how they're feeling, light up any more layers and then go and get them. And that's how the process really unfolds. That's body's work. And that's, what, that's what we're teaching on the foundations course. So come back to your body. Let go of looking at the screen. There'll be a recording of this so you can play with it again. So you don't have to get it perfect. You're just being willing. And what we're going to do is we're going to be open to feel. So again, going to bridge for the group. I want you to drop into your body, into your heart. And just begin to be open to feel whatever's here. Could also be numbness or not wanting to feel, there's a frequency there, the feeling, let yourself feel it. Dropping into your heart, dropping into your feelings. Let go. Stuff will start to arise, just keep dropping into it, letting yourself go. Becoming open to all the feelings. It takes courage to do this, but it's an opportunity to really sink into it. Let go into your feelings. It's time to do it. It's good for you and it will help us clear more. Let's keep dropping deeper underneath that layer. So we've kind of hit the first layer of stuff, but we want to go deeper into the psyche. And a lot of people here are carrying more in their subconscious, a lot of fear and terror. It's lighting up it's very strongly around the second chakra, the first chakra. But we want to go deeper into that. So let go in that first layer. Let yourself go deeper where there's no color, no thought, no words. You have to go underneath. That's where what you don't know is. Yeah, people's childhood stuff coming out. Good, go deeper, deeper still. Let go to feel. Good. Now breathe yourself into that place. There's a place that's beginning to be touched deep in the system where you don't want to feel, that doesn't want to open. 
could be in your belly, it could be in your heart, but breathe yourself in, breathe your awareness in. It's a way of getting deeper into the energy. Breathe yourself in three breaths into that place. It might feel like screaming or dying. Breathing yourself in there, really waking it up. It might get louder, that's good. Keep going. There we go. Now we're in the stuff. Good job. Keep going deeper. It's a lot of second chakra stuff, belly stuff. Good. Past lives, dying, abuse, all sorts of stuff lighting up. Really good. This is what we want to work with. So let yourself open now to really letting that stuff move through you. Let it out. Let it open to be being felt. And now I want to show you something cool. So... This is the emotional there, but if we tune ourselves slightly higher to where the emotional body hits the astral, we start finding entities. So take your awareness, you're in the emotional place. Now, I'm gonna start lighting up the frequency of the entities that are there. I want you to take your awareness, and then it's like you go several notches higher frequency-wise. We have to get into the astral from the emotional. We need to go slightly above where the emotional body meets the astral, and then suddenly we see all these beings. Could be lots of entities, could be lots of creatures. Now, some of you won't see things. Your gift is more feeling or knowing. Some of you will see, some of you will just have a sense. Some of you won't know what's going on. That's fine. You would learn more how to deepen these skills and the foundations, but we're just giving it a go. So let yourself go slightly higher into the astral, open to sense, and there are all these beings here. <laughs> I'll try and light that up for everyone. And now what we're going to do is we're going to start clearing some of these beings and just ask the divine. So you can connect with the light and ask the divine to help release these beings to create a, so we want to bring down the column of light for them to ascend up into, to leave your system. So just go ahead and do that. I'm going to facilitate more of the clearing of them, but you just have to let go. Let go. <laughs> Lots of entities, discarnates, beings hooked into your system is leaving into the light. <laughs> some of them don't want to leave, some of them you're attached to, let go. Some of you are holding on to these beings. They feel like friends, they feel like misery loves company. Let go of it. You don't need that anymore. Let go of that place in your heart. <laughs> Good. Holding in the big guns to help. We'll learn more about the big guns in class. And that's a, a friend. A friend that Bonnie actually really helped in his path and now sort of extends all of that help back to SA and back to the work that's that she does and the work that we do. Feeling feeling things let go. And then for fun, there's a deep, deep, deep black, black, black place in your system. See if you can recognize that. It will feel like pure fear, darkness, a love of destroying, consuming, eating. Just recognize that. That's the dark and bumpy place. That's the dark force place. And I just want you to recognize that frequency if you have that inside of you. We all do. And just let yourself touch it. Let yourself get in touch with it so you know it's there, so you're not hiding it anymore, you're not suppressing it. <laughs> and there's a lot of pain there. It's really actually very, it's very horrible. It's funny in the sense that, you know, we're so messed up and we don't, we don't understand. It's because we don't understand. But all of this is, is really not you and it's not really true. We want to transform it. Good. And then let that go. And this brings us into the third stage, which is surrender to the divine. So this is really the, the deeper reality, actually, of the path is all about surrender. And at first it feels like we're using the light, but then it turns out the light's actually using us. And by surrendering to it, it uses us and transforms us more deeply. So now we've woken up all these places, we want to surrender there to the light, to the power of divinity, 
to love and just do it. Just see if you are willing to surrender. Something in you yearns for it. Something in you just wants to surrender to your real nature, to let go of these limitations. Let's give it a go. And this is the part where things get transformed by the divine more deeply. Arising as healing for each of you. Surrender, open yourself to it. Surrender these places and spaces of pure suffering, all of the past lives, entities, beings, discarnate, dark forces, UFO interference. We're surrendering all of this to the power of the divine. And later you'll know exactly how to work with this yourself. By taking foundations, we train specifically how to deal with these things. But for right now, we're just surrendering and being willing to let them go in a general way. And the divine will still work to release them. Just won't be as specific or potent as the training. Just do your best. And the divine is the most powerful thing. It's really the only thing, but it's the most powerful thing it's what creation arises from. There's nothing that it can't meet and transform. Sometimes it will need to destroy things to transform them. Just let go. Feel for the light. Align yourself with the light. That place we visited earlier, just align yourself with that. Align the dark places and pain points inside of you with that light. Align your life with the light. Your whole life is an extension of you. Align your whole light with the light. Your whole life with divinity. And the divine is moving through it, waking up beliefs, waking up deep subconscious programming, waking up wounding from your parents, these are all facets of the work that we go into in the foundations course. Learning to go into the subconscious in other people and ourselves, finding these pockets of energy. Good. Something you need to lift for the group. <laughs> a place of deep hopelessness and despair just got broken through. Good. And all these discarnates now moving. So once we clear emotional wounds, we can clear more discarnates again. I just saw a bunch leave. We're going to see if there's any more. Some of the dark things didn't want to leave. <laughs> but the divine has the final say. The divine has the final say. Okay. Good. And one of the places that these get taken is they sort of get wrapped up in this divine netting made of the light that we learn on the foundation course. <laughs> that was a piece of evil leaving from someone. So, yeah, evil exists and it needs to be taken care of. And that's more of the dark force skill set that we learn that bonnie is a real expert in i would say that's her that's what one of the things i needed to learn from bonnie that she can do as she has different specialities but that's something that is um, i needed to learn from her because it's it's a it's a particular skill set that not every healer has or can do it's actually quite specialized so i would say the sa work is very specialized it's not regular healing work it's it's got its own particular skills and 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 jobs and the dark force stuff is definitely a big part of that and a, a big, deeply transformational part of the course. So just recognize your whole body, your whole energy system. Let yourself feel where things are at now for you. And there might be things still moving and that would be okay. Just surrender all of that to the light one more time or as many times as you like. The whole life is, is really a surrender and then a dance. <laughs> Let's go up to the light one more time to finish off this section. 
So everyone here, take your awareness. Take it up, 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 up. Just pop out of your normal kind of body mind and then start going up to connect with that place of pure awareness that we went earlier. Start guiding us to that place. It's still a connection you have. We're going to go straight there more quickly this time. Straight up to the core of the light, up, 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 higher, lifting out of this dimension, out of other dimensions, passing through them. Ignore them, ignore the beings that are there. Keep going up, 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 up. To pure divinity, we're almost there. We're hitting the eighth dimension where the angels are. Recognize them and say hello from your heart. And now even higher, higher above that place to where there is no form, no consciousness even, just pure divinity. Up, 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 past the bubble. <laughs> We're getting there, most of you are there, some of you are not. Just keep going up higher, higher, higher to that place of pure love. There we go. We're beginning to arise there. Surrender into that. Let the light there fill you. Even higher. Some of you are connecting into a sort of, uh, I like an archetype of God that you have that's not really pure divinity. So let that go and go deeper. Deeper into love and light. Good. Let yourself remember who you are. Surrendering who you are not, so that you may walk your path home now. More light streaming down through you and as you. And follow that light now down back to your body, through your body into your life. So you are aligning with this flow of divine grace from pure divinity down all these dimensions of reality through into creation and into and through our body. Like all of us is an extension of the divine waking up, waking up as that, waking up into life. Bring your awareness very deeply to down, 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 down into your body to your bones, into your flesh, into your muscles, into your tendons and sinews, into life, into your life, come all the way here. Some of you may want to make a grounding cord, if that helps to ground you, or you could feel your bones, you could squeeze your fingers, feel the bones, breathe yourself in. Come down now, back to your body, you can repeat this any time. Nice. So while you come back, we'll just do a little bit of, um, what we do, uh, talk about the foundations programs and do a bit of a Q&A. We may even see if there's time for a demo. And we'll see what the timing is like. But this is, we're on track. Bonnie, is there anything you'd like to share or add? Because this is, uh, I've learned this work from Bonnie, but this is, you know, you're my teacher and this work is your work. And now it's my work, but is there anything you'd like to add or, or share? Yeah, I mean, you did a really wonderful job, Chris. Awesome. So... Um, yeah, I mean, people, here's the thing. We have misperceptions, we have belief systems, we have the, we will have learned that we can't do things. We've learned, you know, that I'm doomed for suffering all my life or whatever, because we keep trying to find the way, how do we, and how do we heal? You know, how do we, how do we end our suffering? Okay. So Chris is bringing, um, I mean, this is a simple, truly simple technique. And yet, if you truly are accessing and going direct into the light, like I can go there and be there instantly, okay? Bring that light down, but you start shining that light on all these dark places. And, you know, it's like, like that saying, you know, ask and you shall receive, you know, but ask from the heart, like, like an arrow to its mark and, and birds to their watering hole. You know, it's like, it needs to be asked from that place of true desire and true openness. Otherwise it's ego. And if you're doing ego, then you're not going to have the same experience. You're not going to have that direct connection because the ego wants to rule everything. The ego wants to be in charge. The evil, you know, it gets the false self. Ego gets created through misperceptions and mis and beliefs, all of that. So I just want to really bring that to awareness. You know, like if you're having a or difficulty or if you're, you know, like, okay, I can see it, but I can't feel it or I can't bring it in or whatever you're experiencing you might want to just ask yourself, am I willing to surrender? Again, here's that surrender, Chris, you know? Am I willing to surrender my beliefs, what I think I need and want? Am I, <laughs> am I willing to be sheathed, okay? 
you guys, I'm telling you, I mean, anybody who's been on a true healing path knows that if you, if you don't keep that those seeking, you're going to hit, hit the wall like Chris. Okay. And it's like, you hit that wall and it's like, it's like, it, it's a forced surrender. Okay. So again, if you're not feeling, sensing that light, just know that there's something in you that still wants to be in charge and doesn't want to let go. And it's just the ego. It's not who you really are. And I would just encourage everyone to, to really just feel <clears throat> into your own self. And what is it that you are truly asking? What is it you're truly seeking? Okay. If you're asking to have money and wealth <laughs> on when you're healing, that's not it. Okay. The true seeking is about the unraveling of the false ego, the misperceptions, the carryover from all these past lives, uh, all the wounding misperceptions, everything Chris has labeled, you know, we have that. And there needs to come a play point where we just say, I, I, I surrender. I know nothing. You guys, I, I'm saying this even like today, or not today, yesterday, I know nothing. Okay? Because the moment I think I know something, then I'm going to, then I've got, you know, I want to control it. Okay, so for me, I'm constantly, I know nothing. I know nothing. You know, show me, show me, show me. And it may not come how we want it, but I have to tell you, <laughs> I even said this, I'm not getting what I want, but I'm getting what I need. Okay. And it's that, you know, that, that persevering and, and the releasing and unraveling of misperceptions, beliefs, conclusions, all of that. None of those are true and real. Okay. But again, just remember, if you're true seeking, shift's going to happen. <laughs> We know that, right, Chris? We know that. Yeah. That cracked me up so much when I would take the foundations of you way back when. I remember it's with this young kid and you went, none of your beliefs are true. And I went, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> yeah, and they're not. They're not. You know, since you hit that one, Chris, since you said that, I'm going to say a little bit more about that, okay? So here's the thing. Not one belief is true. I don't care what you think you're believing. I don't care if it's a religious belief or you've got proof and evidence. That's a belief. None of your beliefs are true and real. Not one of them. When you start accepting that, magic starts to happen. Okay, Because you, you start moving away from, it's got to be this way. I believe that. I know. You know, it's like you're wrong and simply isn't true. So, again, none of your beliefs are the absolute. Guaranteed. <laughs> Gosh, that was so good. Yeah, and it's that sort of the combination of higher dimensional sort of teachings and real, really knowing how to know know thyself. That's that's what you teach, Bonnie. It's an ancient path. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. yeah, and Chris too. I think we should bring this one to the table as well. There is no good, bad, right, wrong, and there are no victims. And I know people get really upset with me about that one, mm -hmm. but it's an, it's an absolute. There are no victims. There is no good, bad, right, wrong. Everyone is a soul evolving. Everyone is a divine being. Everyone is seeking liberation, happiness, joy, peace. Ultimately, everyone is returning back to the oneness, okay? The journey is knowing thyself in all ways, which know, means knowing creation. And creation is everything. The darkest of dark and light. And you might want to wake up to that one. We teach that stuff too. And you'll get it. You'll get it. You'll understand yeah, that's that's a that's a big one, and that mm. I think that that ties into really the dark force class, and that was the piece I really needed. That was my favorite module when I was in those trainings with you because it it touched upon something that something that just always felt really off in the background, and that mm -hmm. I I ne had never received like proper care or love or someone who knew how to work with that stuff, and. I was just so messed up at that level. I was just tremendously messed up and nothing else, no amount of therapy would have helped me there. And that was, but your work did. And it, it sort of cut through and really, really could help, help the part of me that was trapped in that kind of good, bad, evil. Oh yeah. I mean, stuff. yeah. I mean, if you're, if you're truly believing that, you know, there, that someone is bad, where, where your focus goes, it, it, everything pulls us out to look out there rather than to look within, you know, and it's yeah. all about looking within. So again, you know, even you know, my book is all about 
you know, using your own life to unravel your subconscious because it's not about what's happening out there. You've called it in, people. There's another piece that's really important to understand. You're creating your life 100%. Bummer, but it's true. You're not some victim. You've called it in. You've made soul agreements. There's pieces that you're trying to unravel. So you've made agreements to have these experiences to push you into, un, you know, to opening up and clearing and healing and waking up. But we have, you know, we have our misperceptions. So every time something happens, it's like, you did this to me. You hurt me. God is punishing me. I'm not love. Sorry, people. Wake up. The truth is, is you are creator incarnate. You create your life 100%. Like it or not, it's an absolute. <laughs> and and once once we engage with that or accept responsibility for that, we can really work with it. So things that in the past were just like, you know, I how can I deal with this? This can never change. Why is this so impossible for me? If we take responsibility for that, then suddenly there's a lot we can do, and the path becomes one of a, it becomes a beautiful a beautiful ride, an intense one, but just pure magic, really magic yeah. yeah shift happens i guarantee yeah. it I, I promise it really does yeah, yeah. i want to touch on um i want to touch on the the structure of the foundations course and then if people have questions i mean for me you know getting to hear bonnie answer questions is it's kind of gold so if you have a question around this kind of stuff put it in the chat um and i will keep an eye on that and then we'll we'll have a QA section. But if you if you if there's something you really want to understand about this work, you can ask us. Um, I'm just going to touch on the foundations course, if that's okay, buddy. Um, oh, yeah. Go ahead, Chris. Take it it's, away. Yeah, because it's 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 I want to give a bit of context. So I'm just going to share my screen and then we'll have a look at the website. And people are asking, you know, um, if they want to join the program, do we offer scholarships? We have a, a really good payment plan. Uh, a nine month payment plan it's the most we could do but that's possible so if you need to meet us somewhere you can do that for the person that asked that question so uh, let me share um, and we're going to cover we're going to cover this so here is the here is the foundations uh, page on the website and the classes start February 3rd so it's coming up it's coming up in a few weeks time and yeah, it's, this goes over the structure of things. And uh, Tracy is going to be joining me in some of the classes, I think, uh, another amazing uh, accelerator. Um, but I'm the main teacher for this one. Sarah is teaching the class in Australian time. And let's have a look. So uh, let's take a look. So the there are 10 modules, and it's spread over 10 months. And a module is a weekend class, so six hours, uh, on two days of the weekend and it's this is where we learn the material we do all of the deep journeying the teachings um deep healings learning to work on each other and and actually working on each other in class as well so I, i'll facilitate some of that in in class and then after class we have two pods where you will be split into groups with three other uh, or two other students two or three and then an accelerator, so someone who's trained in Bonnie's system who can supervise and, and give sort of hold the structure of the space and give pointers and organize the training. And you'll practice at giving a healing and receiving a healing. And this starts from the first module. It gives you the tools to begin working on someone from module one. And then so each of these 10 months, you are also working in these small pods outside. But the first module is in energetic anatomy, where we are working more deeply with our higher levels, the light becoming familiar with the different energy bodies and the energetics of triggers. So really getting into the stuff already and learning how to do what we did today, but in a, in a deeper way. The second module is on entities. So entities are what hooks into our emotional issues and they amplify them and make actually sort of live through us and also can manipulate us in, in certain ways. So uh, this module is all about clearing, this is the module in March, the second module, all about learning to clear entities, discarnates and attachments from the emotional body and it goes very deep. There's a lot of training we can do about entities. It could be longer than one weekend, but we're going to spend that time learning it. And after you've done this training, this module, you'll be able to clear entities and people. But that's what you will you will you will absolutely be able to do it. The third module in April, the focus of that month is past lives. So how to track and unravel wounding carried from past lives. We'll also dive into issues. Then we're going to start looking at a 
looking at deep issues that everyone carries in their being. And, and for this module, we're going to pick grief and loss, a place of pure separation that each of us carries, a very deep sense of grief and loss, and, and ultimately can be a separation from the divine. But then it will have all of these different layers of human loss from all our past lives woven into it, and then other kinds of interference as well. But this module is going to be looking to work, rework with past lives through an energetic that we call the life stream, a way of tracking and clearing past life energy, and the issues that began in past lives. So we, we carry forward a lot of interference from past lives. We carry forward, you know, even um, magical lineages that may be sort of quite dark and manipulative. The energetics of that we carry forward. We carry forward sort of rivalries with other um, powerful shamans and practitioners that can still be affecting us. And we're going to start diving into looking at that. We're going to look at contracts. Um, the fourth module is looking on ET interference. So this is the module where we expand our awareness from just going to the live stream. We start to go more cosmic. We start to touch higher dimensions. We start to recognize and meet various alien beings, both the ones that can help us and the ones we also want to work with and be able to, to clear. And we're going to be perceiving and clearing alien interferences, interdimensional beings and implants that they put into our systems to track us and manipulate us. And we'll also learn to work with higher dimensional ETs to supercharge our clearing work. And this module has a lot of journeying to different realms, dimensions, planets. It's really cool. It's a real favorite. Um, and the next module, so halfway through the course, we really go into the deep, 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 deep places. We built enough sort of support that we can really go there. So we're going to start looking at dark forces. Lots of people don't really understand dark forces and how to work with them, but this is a speciality of SA. We're going to look to work with dark forces, blood oaths, and demonic beings. We will deepen our understanding of how to track and clear issues, looking at the dark night of the soul. So the dark night of the soul is a big dynamic that happens for many of us in our lives. I was probably hitting the beginning of it or in it when I met Bunny. That was where I was really coming into face with all of my deep wounding, my deep darkness from past lives, the places in me that were being completely sort of eviscerated. And um, that's what we want to learn to clear in someone. So how to bring your healing to the deepest, darkest crisis point of someone's life and actually create healing and change that. Module, we get, we, uh, next one is module six, soul and essence retrieval. So as we go through trauma and shock, parts of our essence and soul can become fragmented and split off or not in our body. A lot of our, our soul and essence actually is high, hanging out in sort of like it's in the Bahamas. It's at higher dimensional levels of light. It doesn't want to come into our body yet. It's looking at all the wounding and going, you know what, maybe in four lifetimes time, but we don't want that. We want actually all of our light, all of our presence and power in our body now. And we want to release anything in the way of that. Um, there can also be parts of your soul and essence that have been captured by other sorcerous beings and they can be keeping them hostage. They can be, uh, you could have given it in an exchange. You could have given part of yourself to someone like a dark force or something for power. We often make these kinds of um, exchanges in past lives. We didn't know any better. But now we gain the ability to work with that and clear that up for people. And so this module is about being able to find soul parts, both for other people and yourself, in the three realms, which is a way of shamanically understanding everything in the higher dimensional realms, all of the upper dimensions, all of the uh, subtle places in the cosmos, other universes, the middle realm, which just refers to everywhere on Earth, past, present and future and the lower realms of the underworld that would have begun working with in the dark force module, which is an energetic realm of pure sort of separation and suffering that's been sort of created and sits partly in human consciousness as a sort of realm. And we, 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 our stuff resonates with it. So we want to learn to bring back soul pieces from that realm and work with the beings there. That brings us on to module seventh, which is, yeah, actually learn to work with the underworld more deeply and work with soul capturing. So, Soul capturing is a is a darker sort of activity that some of us may have done. And it is to do with, with taking parts of people's essence for power, to be able to control them, to be able to gain power. Um, and it is a it's something that we want to know how to unravel when we meet, how to really truly unravel that, which is, you know, this is part of the side of sort of dark magic and um yeah, really manipulative practices that actually we want to address and clear up. And that's important. It's important. Not all of you will want to work with dark forces, but if you do meet that, we, we and it's, if, it's your, if it's a job of yours, if somebody who's got that going on comes to you in your practice or into your life, we want to know how to meet that. And if you've got that going on for yourself, that's also something we want to clear up. 
So that brings us to module eight, Healer, Heal Thyself. And this is really surrender with a capital S, how to really meet and unravel your own emotional wounding and help your clients release deeper wounds and blocks. So how to go very deeply with a client or yourself into the deepest places where you're stuck, how to really be with them there and how to get it to move. And this is a deepening. This is a deepening of all of the other work. And also, you know, it gets in, it takes us into often actually where, where trauma and sort of issues around sexuality are, all of our deep core issues, this deepens us into them. And, and we learn how to really help people that are, that have got things that they don't know what to do with. They don't know how to move forward from there. This is a catalyst for deeper healing. Module nine, we look at relationships. Relationships help show us where we're stuck and help us to wake up from our deepest woundings. We're going to learn to track and release the patterns of wounding that are showing up in our familial, romantic, and ancestral relationships. So we're all in relationships. We're in relationships with life, with God, with our family, with our partners, our friends, our enemies, and our ancestors. And these are all relationships that we want to learn how to not only navigate, but actually heal. And when you're working with someone, you we, what we do is energetically, we learn to track the energy of the relationship and how it how it is affecting and, and sort of um, arising from wounding and interference happening across the parties. So that, you know, if, if we're working on someone, we're lighting up both parties or have many people are involved. And then we're looking at the energy and tracking the energy dynamics between them, the wounding that's there, the past lives where this may have begun, the higher dimensional levels where this actually is arising from, and then releasing and clearing all of that up. Because usually our relationships didn't start this time around. It's a cast of characters that we've lived many, many lifetimes with. And all of that needs unraveling. The other thing that we're going to look here at here is the ancestral relationship. So this is the sort of, this is our genetic ancestral energetics that come forward from your parents, their parents, and so forth. Everything that's held in the ancestral line, which typically contains an enormous amount of trauma, pain, suffering. The people live things, the things people have lived through is extraordinary and very often very hard. And so that's, that has an influence in our system that we want to clear. Module 10 is self-mastery and practitioner skills. So we're going to learn more about our blind spots, take our tracking to an even more specialized level and learn how to work with groups energetically like today. I'm working with you as a group and with something that we're going to learn. This module is really about tying everything together and accelerating your development so that it all, it all comes together and crystallizes into your expression of healing. The idea is not to become like me or like Bonnie, but it's about becoming the version of you that can do this work that has this higher dimensional healing ability and knowledge so that you can you can share this work it's, it will become your work um and just to finish this is the price for the next 24 no we'll do 48 hours it's going to be four thousand dollars nine hundred and ninety seven and uh this is a big saving because it the program normally is seven thousand and $997. And it comes with a $15,000 in pre-recorded bonuses. And this is partly the masterclass program that Bonnie teaches. So what Bonnie's delivering to you today is sort of wisdom from the that, that she touches on in the Know Thyself program. So actually, um, that would be a place where, where you can get even more of that. And I think Bonnie's going to actually come to a couple of classes uh, which is going to be really exciting. So I'm looking forward to you being there. She's going to share her wisdom and and deepen us. You know, deep. This is her. This is her system of healing, and so it's fantastic. We're going to get some time with her to to go deeper with it. Um, and also, I'll mention that in as part of the bonuses that are available, I'm also going to be running two group clearings for the foundation class members every month, just to help keep moving your own personal wounding along in that process. So this is all. Um, yeah, this is all sort of designed to really transform you and transform your life. You'll gain all these skills of clearing, tracking, and transforming energy, but you'll also be learning to um, really transform yourself, to transform your whole being. That's what we want to do. We want to we want to wake up and we want to move forward. Um, and so that offer that's there on the website, we're going to keep that at that price for the next forty eight hours, and that holds also if you're watching this as a recording. Um, the thing that's not on the website is that I will be doing some group clearings twice a month for people on the course that will be free for you. Um, and yeah, now we're going to touch on any questions and other things. And Bonnie, if you have anything to share about it, then, then as well, of course, 
um yeah i think so we've got lots of messages here i'm gonna read them yeah, yeah i think we're Chris, would you like me to read uh, to you one question from a while ago that'd be yeah. super yeah and bonnie okay. jumping the ones that you want to answer yeah question bonnie said that creation is everything including darkness evil if she said that that if she said that then help me understand when you took us to the love light where was the darkness mm -hmm. it's the same i mean think about your life do you have moments where you feel happy enjoyed you have moments where you feel love so frequency energy is a full spectrum okay it's from the lightest of light blinding brilliant bright light to the darkest of dark where there seemingly is no light at all so we can enter into any of these places at will like i can go direct into the blackest of black and be in evil and see all the darkness and i can also go into the light and be in that light so everything is coexisting and yet what happens is is when we shut down the heart when we have hurt you know, broken heart or believe we don't, we're not loved or whatever, you know, we take things personally. But when we start closing down that heart, then we're no longer connected with the light that is still there. The light is always there. Okay. I look in demons. I see the light in every sentient being. There is light. Okay. So everything is ex existing simultaneously. And when we focus, we can see you know, I can see this, I can see this issue here, I can see you know, the, uh, the, all the varying degrees of lightness and darkness inside one human being, okay? So here's another component of all that. You already have everything. You are the darkest of dark and the lightest of light in your own self, okay? So it's, it's where do we put our focus? Where do we really want to live? Do I want to stay in my negativity? Do I want to stay in heartlessness? Do I want to stay where I want to hate people or judge them or kill them or make them wrong or punish them and stay in that dark energy? Or do I want to hold the frequency of light where there's more energy frequency of that place where the heart is open and we're not hurting each other. We're not judging each other. We're not making wrong. We're not finding fault. Okay. We are in the precipice of the new paradigm people. There's a light shining that is exposing all this darkness we see it everywhere everything that's happening the planet and it's all it's purging and and humanity and its own purging that's all part of the the light so what's happening now is the light now is demanding that we start to drop the negativity we start to drop the blackness or we drop the evil we drop that desire to cause harm and we start moving towards a truer, lighter frequency, which is a more heart open, where we stop doing atrocities and hurting one another. Okay, this is all part of the divine plan in its unfolding. I've been tracking this. I remember it was in, I saw the veils. I saw the the shifts that were coming back in nineteen. What year is that? Nineteen eighty seven. And you know, watching and witnessing it come coming to where we are right now, and so when we think about. Okay, but some people have a hard time with, oh my goodness, you know, creation, God itself, God can't be evil. Well, there's nothing but God, people. I'm sorry, but there's nothing but creation. There's nothing but that. We are all that. We are everything. Okay. It's just, it's like, where do we want to, where do we want to live? Where do we want to be? Okay. I already know the darkness, you know, the, the pain and suffering anguish. You know, we all know that one. But what we don't know is pure love and light, okay? But that's that's where we're moving. That's where everyone is going is that frequency of pure love and light. So when you think about creation, if you can accept and at least, at least have the awareness or opening or willingness to recognize, whoa, everything is that. I mean, even in religion, they do say everything is creation. It's in you. You know what I'm saying? They call it, you know. So there are teachings and practices that people have but the thing is is you know it's like as long as we say that there's that that's good and that's bad then we create a duality we create separation when i accept that okay yep yeah, sometimes in my life i've had times where i hated somebody or wished them ill or whatever okay that came from within am i going to deny it no but if i own it accept it and also embrace that feeling it lifts and it no longer is the truth within my own self and that's what people, 
you know, to me, it's like waking up and understanding, wow, if I embrace what I'm feeling, if I embrace all of me, I'm no longer that. How, how, how cool is that? Okay. And that's what we're in. We're in the midst of, of the shift of the ages, transforming everything, moving into light rather than dark. And everyone is in it. Your dark, your shit's coming up now big time. And it's not going to stop. Okay. And the more you, you know, the sooner you start facing it, accepting, all righty, I got this darkness in me. It's in here. All right, let me face it and let it unravel. And then you stop causing harm. I mean, who wants to be judging everybody and making somebody wrong, fault finding? Who wants to be blaming you did this to me? And it's just dis disempowering. When you, you understand who you are, you're empowered. When you get it, oh, wait a second. My subconscious is creating everything. Oh, my higher levels are bringing all of us together to have these experiences so we can unravel, be clear, heal. Okay, keep that heart open. That's what's up, people. Like it or not, believe it or not, that's what's up. Okay, more questions. Uh, just before I read the next question, uh, if uh, you want to ask question, a question with your voice in person, then you can use the reactions button and uh, click the raise hand. Uh, the next question, are there pre uh, prerequisites for this training in terms of ability to work with energy? That's a great yes. question. That's a great question. So, I mean, when I came into the program, um, on some level, I had a gift. I was going to be able to do this work, but I actually didn't have the ability to do it yet. I could certainly couldn't see energy. I certainly couldn't really track any energy. And that's what I learned through the course. So I would say the main thing is you have a real desire, something in it really calls to you. And then if that's the case, it will all work out. You know, whatever gifts and faculties that you have and everyone has their own gifts will be woken up and trained. Um, if, yeah. So I would say that the main, if you have a desire to do it, you can absolutely do it. Um, and we we cover an introductory module where we're learning to really go over the basics that would catch you up to a point where you could take the rest of the course. That's what that first module is. Learning to feel your different energy bodies, learning to work with this energy, learning to clear things. You know, after you, you will be able to do the course. Um, if you really needed more time to begin to get familiar with energy, there are other courses. So Intuitive View with Sarah is a fantastic program. I'd recommend that. Um, but if you have a desire to do this course, something in you can do it. So I would say that 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 that's what I have on, on my agenda. But Bonnie, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, you... what I find, Chris, is because we, we also we do have Intuitive View, which helps you to open up your senses. We also have Awaken the Shaman, which teaches you how to move energy, which is different than being a psychic. But to step into the foundations, for me, if you have no abilities, you're, you know, you're going to, that takes time to open and develop. So we like to have people that have the ability to at least sense energy where they either, they can see it or sense it or feel it, smell it, taste it, know it, have the knowing or empathing, some kind of sense where you're already feeling energy. Okay, that way you're not going to get lost in the class because we're not, see the thing about the class, we don't slow down. We're not going to slow down. We're going to keep moving forward. So you may, if you're not someone that has those kind of senses, see, here's the truth. Everyone has them. They just don't know it. They haven't, mm -hmm. either you lost them, put them away, um, or, you know, it's like now it's time to reawaken and at, reactivate those abilities. So that's why we created the other programs. And when you come here, this is about, this is the fast track, people. This is about learning things and it's quick. This program used to be a two-year program, just so you understand. So now we're downloading, giving information. It's up to you to practice, practice, practice. We offer all the things to make that happen so that you practice everything you're learning and you have the opportunity to practice even more. So again, you know, it's like, and what Chris is saying too, that heart's desire, that's key as well. That's really the truth. If you have that true desire, like, wow, I really want what's offered here. I want to be able to have these abilities, skills. I really want to heal my life because that's really what happens. I think that's yeah. important for everyone to know. You take this program, your life will change drastically. You will shift and change drastically at a very fast pace. And 
the, that opportunity, you know, is for those who are truly asking, truly seeking, truly wanting. You know, we we work with people and find out what they need and put them where they, you know, help them to decide where they need to study first or what, you know, where they need to be. So, yeah, but yes. foundations is life changing. Yeah. And that's a, that, that's a great point. If you were if you were wondering, is this for me? You could schedule a consultation for me for free from the foundation's page site, and then I can have a look at you and sort of sense into what would feel right. You know. Um, so yeah, if you're not sure whether you would qualify, come and have a chat, and then you know we'll be able to work out. You know, is there is there a better program for you, or are you really ready? Um, and you, I, the thing I would add is that you absolutely don't need to be able to see energy. Usually, people are very caught up on seeing. But mm -hmm. if you feel energy, that's all it is. It's just sensing energy. That If you can sense energy, you can do this work. If you have a feeling sometimes there's something wrong or I can feel just the energy in this room is different or I feel different around this person, there's this weird charge and ickiness, that's feeling energy. That's, all, that's what we mean. And that can be trained and deepened and it can open up to this amazing world. And that's the world of the shaman that Bonnie opened up for me. And you can learn that too. You can learn to travel in it, to work with it, to track it. And it just goes deeper. It's a rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, another question, uh, again, about good and evil. Since any everything is all of the creator, in other words, good and evil exists, then why would we want to clear it up if it all has a right to exist and it doesn't matter anyway? There's more, but that's the question. <laughs> yeah. yeah, ultimately, nothing really matters, okay? Ultimately, everything is meaningless and pointless, for real, okay? And as souls evolving, ultimately, we want to go back into the frequency of pure consciousness, which is creation. So if you remember, which you may not, creation in its own awareness became, became aware of its own awareness, and that's where energy started to move. That's where creation started to create all material, all manifest, all dement, all of this is now created from that. What happens though too is all of us, like there's Chris, there's me and everybody else, the moment that part woke up to the awareness itself, we became an individ individualized soul, still connected to the whole, you know, the whole thing, but we now forgot. And so we come in and we have experiences. Physical Physicality is where we experience the density. This is where we feel physical pain. This is where we feel emotional pain. You're not, if you check, if you really go into creation, there's no pain, there's no suffering, there's no need once beliefs, okay? That's not existing. But it's in the physicality where we begin to have these experiences. And the journey of the soul is to know all of these places, all these all existence in order to become again back into oneness of the totality of all existence okay so we come in we have experiences we have trauma dramas we have beliefs we you know have all pain and suffering we turn into we turn into dark beings because our heart gets closed now we want to hurt and kill and maim and you know harm cause harm cause atrocities but that's not who we really are we became that we became it because oh feels like someone doesn't love me oh i'm not wanted oh i don't belong oh i'm not enough heart closes evil gets created we're co-creating it all but it's still all creation okay so again we're just you know it's like it's the journey of the soul evolving we've been many time space adventures uh, everywhere okay and there's mo we're multi-dimensional we aren't just this physical body we aren't just the soul in this body we have our higher levels our other levels the gospel levels super conscious levels we have all these interdimensional aspects of ourselves we are incredible beings we just don't know it okay and the journey back to self is we begin to discover who we are we begin to know who we are so it's an evolution and ultimately it's creation evolving itself because we are all that so that's that's pretty much what's up Next question about soul capture. Could that be happening when someone is unable to leave a relationship that no longer work is working for them? That would depend very specifically on what was going on. So actually, I have students who ended up um, in relationships with kind of spiritual cult leaders who had a genuine power 
And they did do things like that. They were energetically manipulating them. They were making them kind of fall in love with them in a certain way. They were, you know, really kind of using their energy in a way that was really out of integrity. But I would say that's not super common, but it could be going on. So I've encountered something like that totally, even sort of curses and spells that someone like that has put on them. But in most relationships, it's more that you have, so for you, the person who's asked this question, it's more that you have a lot of past life stuff that's not really fully been resolved and, and you're not really ready to let go of that. So there's a huge amount of pain and drama from past lives that some, that's the place in you that you need to let go of this person of lighting up for you. So the purpose of this relationship has partly been to wake up and and show you this place in your being where, you know, there was, there was some very difficult stuff that happened in those past lives. And on some level, you're still really caught in that. You're still really scarred by that, still traumatized by it. That's the thing that needs to let go so that you can, and, and to open your heart there. So feel for the place where that is lighting up and do this process. Connect with the light, feel the place, surrender it, go deeper and deeper and deeper, repeat that and and let see if you can let go of whatever is there, which looks like it's got some pain and trauma there from past lives. Yeah. yeah. So that's actually not uh, a, a true, she's not, this person's not experiencing like a soul capturing by somebody else. Here's when we're talking about true soul capturing, this is satanic ritual. Okay. There are people, and I have worked with people that have um, seen and been attacked. Okay. But when we can, what happens is, is people that do these rituals, okay, they have these, they start to develop the ability to literally, when they kill the body, the soul leaves, they can, there's several things they can do. They can devour that energy, pull it in, because there's a belief that as they devour more soul frequency, they become even more powerful. Then there's also uh, the soul capturing, where people, the soul leaves, but the soul is caught, captured, and put in a what we call the soul box. And that part of the, that's the incarnating aspect of the, of the soul. So that gets stuck in time, and they're captured. It doesn't mean you still have all these other aspects of the self, but that incarnating aspect is now caught and stuck and unable to incarnate, okay? So that's that's actually one of the most uh, intense things that can happen to a soul, because you, you, your, your soul, your, your evolution gets stuck, stifled for a bit. And um, so by releasing all of that, we clear that, but we also send that energy back to its own soul frequencies, like, all, like I just described, you know, all the, the other aspects of who we are. So there's a re reconnecting and then that soul just kind of keeps on evolving. One of the things that I do, and Chris probably does as well, is when we are unwrap, when we're clearing and releasing people that have been caught in soul cat in the soul boxes, is to accelerate them so they can be a part of where we are here and now, you know, in their soul's evolution. So we, you know, we we can do that as as well. So you know, soul capturing is. Um, you know, it's intense. I mean, you get stuck. I mean, it, so here's the thing. Some of you may have been had been in a soul capturing, but if you're here right now, you're not stuck in some, you're not in a box somewhere, okay? Just so you understand. Bonnie, I, I know that you'll have to leave in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and is there something that you want to say before you go? And Chris, can you stay a little longer? Yeah. 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 No, I you know, for me, it's like, I, I'm just someone that's like, I just wanted to heal my life, okay? I was severely tortured as a kid and severely damaged and broken, shattered. And all I, all I did was wanting to die. You know, I was eight years old, laying on the floor, trying to will my body to die, you know? And I know other people are living in great suffering. So, you know, I began my journey and created this work because it works. And what I want to share with people is that you don't have to want to be a teacher or a healer, but if you want the fast track to your own healing, your own waking up, your own evolution at a soul level, then foundations is one of the you know most potent fast track uh, methodologies in the world. So, you know, think about it, feel into it. You want you want the fa it doesn't matter what you choose. See, it doesn't matter. But if that's what your desire is, you want you want to unravel get more liberated, freer from your own limitations, your beliefs, your pain, your suffering, this is one way to do it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and head out. Thank you, Chris. Awesome. Thank you, Ofer. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you, Bonnie. Mm -hmm. Okay, go. uh, Chris, there is one good question about pods. Yes. Is, 
How many hours per week or months are the training pods scheduled or available and how they get, how are they scheduled? Yeah. So there's, you'll be in, if you were in a pod with two other people and then an accelerator, those would be, um, those would be two 1.5 hour pods, or one and a half hour pods. So that's, uh, that's three hours of pods a month outside of the workshop that's supervised. You could then schedule to meet with your classmates and practice with them outside of that, but that would be without an accelerator. But that's people often end up doing that as the training progresses so they get more practice in. Um, those are offered at time zones that will work for the class. So we, we sort of take an inventory of where people are living and when would work for them. And then we try and offer them at times that would work. So typically they work out, um, you know, it might be that they're at the afternoon if you're in the States um, and we'll try and make a balance of, you know, do people prefer those on the weekdays or, or weekends? Um, and they would be offered by, we have accelerators all over the planet. So we've got them, we've got accelerators in America, in the UK, in Europe and in Australia. So one of them will have a slot that works for you where your time is and they cover different days of the week. So you're, you're given access to the, their scheduled pods and you just sign and click as you go. And you could schedule all your pods at once if they're all open, or you could just take it take it piece by piece. But there's a lot of accelerators that will be facilitating pods, and they're, they're all fantastic to work with. Is there anything you wanted to add over about that, or do you think I covered? Uh, I don't remember if you explained what a pod is. If you did, great. If you didn't, maybe do a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. So the pods are the pods are where we sort of we we take the teachings and then we we really embody it. It's the practice of embodying the healing work. And so a pod is at least you and another student, usually two other students. Um, so there's three students, and then myself or another accelerator, um, someone who's really learned and practices Bonnie's method, will be there, sort of guiding the pod. So okay, you're going to work on you. You're going to work on you. And one, we take turns in, okay, so this person's going to come and they have an issue. And it's, it's actually a place where we practice energy healing skills and get some feedback. And the other person receiving the work can say, yeah, I felt this and this has changed for me. And I, I feel, you know, I felt this going on or I saw that. And it's a chance for us to really explore and play with the methods. And we have a bit more time and one-on-one and -on -one attention. So it's outside of class and there's more, it's more focused learning time. And they're really fun. People love pods. And it's a place where also we can start working on our issues. So, you know, we can start bringing our issues that we know I've got anxiety. I've got this feeling about this person in my life. And then we can bring that to pods and our classmates will start unraveling it. Um, yeah. So those are pods and the pods are great. The pods are really fun, really super. Tracy will be running lots of pods. Um, she's a fantastically gifted um, teacher in her own right. And she she will facilitate some of the pods for this class and she's she's fantastic got a fantastic touch for making everyone feel really safe and and taking going deeper in our process together yeah and from my experience it's also a very safe place to practice uh you know uh, everyone and everyone knows the rules and uh yeah. and so you can feel safe while while getting practice uh a question about pain how do we control emotions of pain and suffering through our experience? We, instead of thinking about controlling them, you just want to meet them. You want to, if by control we mean sort of suppress or push them down, we usually have been trying to do that for a long time. And then at a certain point, it builds up and it can't be suppressed anymore. That's what a kind of breakdown is that becomes a breakthrough. So instead of trying to control, we want to we want to accept that they're there and and actually open. And then through engaging, through opening and feeling that we go deeper with what that's meant to show us. If there's a lesson, if there's something that we need to let go of or to recognize going on or an energy that needs to be released by feeling and opening to it, it will begin sort of processing and, and also you know become available to be released by other kinds of work like this kind of healing or therapy. And that's the way that we really meet life. It's, life is showing us where we're stuck and it's actually trying to help us let go of all the places where we are full of pain and stuckness. We need to open to the process. You could say that's real control. You could say that's real control. So control, but not from like repression and suppression and wanting to kind of um, force something that you don't like and resist it, but actually engaging with it and transforming it. 
if you like that, in the sense of re genuine transformation, you could say it's more like that. Yeah. Okay, just one second. Um, so when you are working with the dark forces and other entities, how do you protect yourself? I know Bonnie calls in emissaries at uh, times in clearings, or is everything just a frequency and not a physical being? Yeah, the beings that we're working with are not physical. Unless you're working with a, a person, then they're a physical being. These beings exist, but they exist at a different density of energy. And really, the core of you can't be harmed or hurt. But where we are not yet woken up to the light becomes a place where, where things can hook into us. So if I have a lot of fear and trauma and terror or a desire for power, those might be places where their, their energies can kind of, there could be a hook that forms there. And that's why we want to wake up and, and transform these places. Um, protection is usually coming out of the desire to control and a deep fear. So the first thing we want to do is to recognize that actually we are the light. So surrender more deeply to the nature of who you are to bring forward more of this truth in you the truth that can't be controlled by anything or manipulated it's the core of your being as light and love and awareness and from that place you can't really be controlled or manipulated that's the core of you that exists through every lifetime you've had and will uh, outside of all of time and space and it's sort of returned back to divinity wake awakening um so on a practical level, when I'm working with dark beings, what Bunny has taught is really you need to have a lot of presence and awareness. You need to be able to actually track what's happening so that when things are trying to, to affect you, you can recognize it. And um, if it's genuinely working with genuine darkness, not just your own emotional projection, then you know sometimes it will take some energetic uh, lifting and ability and force to contend with that. That's only if you're trying to actively deal with something in someone. So if I'm trying to exercise basically a, a dark force being that's managed to hook its way into someone, I need to have I need to have that juice. I need to have the energy of the light. I need to have these various things so that I can can actually create a change there. But normally these things can't truly harm who you are. So that's an old fear and belief that we've picked up. That's not really true. They surrender to the core of who you are, and then. You know, if you if it's your job to do that work, then you will develop the necessary energetic muscles to be able to do that, and that's also what the course teaches. Yeah. Okay, here's uh, a question about the number of people. How many people are typically in the classes? And I'd say, uh, usually, uh, I see as a program manager between fifteen and above. Uh, we don't place a limit, and the concern here, Chris, you can you can help answer this is. Sometimes it can be hard for me staying sovereign in my own field if people are all over the place. Mm, that's a great it's a great question. It's a really good question. So, you know, I think people have described that concern to me before previous previous participants of the foundations course. And usually what I try and do is work out to re work out what's going on with them, that they're having that experience. So what are the places in them that are creating this sort of lack of sovereignty and the energetic conditions usually for merging energetically? So part of it tends to be that your energy field is kind of open to being very, usually people with that issue are self identify as being very strongly empaths. They have a tendency to merge sort of like in a kind of which can come out of a very like in my system that came out of a deep codependence issue but it also could come out of a hyper vigilance like in a childly childhood situation you feel safe something in you is always sort of merging out to check out what's going on with other people that creates a doorway of a, a merging sort of link where things can blend and become entangled and that entanglement can transfer energy so usually it's working out what's going on with the person that that's happening and then working with them to shift that and change that so that they don't have that issue on a practical level, there's things that we do. Like I do a lot of self-hygiene exercises in class. So when class starts every day, I get people to do a, a grounding cord. I get them to do sort of a basic clearing to run energy. 
and it, and then I'm doing healings on the class throughout class, and then at the end of the class we're doing stuff as well too. So you really you're getting clearer in class. There's more energy, there's more issues leaving and being transformed. Um, that's just the nature of class. Like it has, it's actually trying to energetically transform you and to move your stuff as well as learning about it. We're actually trying to clear it. And I do various clearings and healings as part of it. Um, so some of it's about learning why your system is like that and addressing and balancing that. And some of it's just that the class will bring stuff up and then help clear it. Yeah. Uh, there is a question, perhaps it was, it is about soul retrieval. How many times do you need to get your soul back? from any of these rituals, especially if you have, uh, if, you, if you're clearing dark forces uh, when you do a retrieval? Um, it is, it's going to depend upon, it's going to depend on the individual, what's going on for them. So um, for one, if there's one particular event where this took place, so if this is one, uh, I would expect if someone had this kind of ritual satanic event happen, either this lifetime or other lifetime, I would expect one time would be sufficient to address that if the practitioner knows what they're doing to really bring back that soul piece. Um, it could be that in some cases there's a lot of other things going on. There might be many lifetimes involved. There might be parts of them that it, that event is one event in, in space and time, but it has other things going on there that also need to be tracked and addressed. And so that might be, there might be another session that's needed to do that, but I would expect it to be one. Now, you're not going to get all of your wounding in one clearing. It's a it's an ongoing process of these different layers and components. So you might have another thing going on or a separate issue. But if it's one thing, if it's one event where that's taken place, if somebody has grabbed, taken a piece of essence, that's one. You only need one clearing to address that. That's one thing the practitioner should be able to address for you. Yeah. Uh, so this foundation course can open and advance abilities as we practice this work. Yes, absolutely. That's what it's designed to do. Yeah. Uh, I understand uh, that when these classes were held uh, in in person in the past, it was very, very intense for participants. Participants. So uh, how intense uh, can it get? As intense as it needs to for the people there. And... I also try and work in a way that is um, that has a lot of support. So what we're doing today would have brought up stuff for you. So today would be like a great taster of that energetics. Um, when we're touching and working with the light and feeding and bridging into these places, it will have brought up stuff and that might feel strong or it might feel subtle for you. It's going to be different for every person, but that's what we're going to be doing. And we're going to be doing much more of it in a very concentrated way, but it's going to be a bit like today. So however today felt would be a good indication of at least the, how that's going to start as a process. As we go deeper and we actually wake up to more of our nature, we become more available to surrender and let go. And so we can go to deeper places and more difficult things and actually surrender there. So that's something that we're learning to do. Um, it doesn't need to be hard or intense. It's usually where we're resisting that it becomes a struggle. So we're trying to learn where we are holding on and resisting feeling, suppressing and denying things so that we can actually open and surrender and allow in this healing, allow in the divine there and process what we need to. So it really just depends how much you're resisting. If you're willing to, if you're willing to feel, if you're willing to let go, if you're willing to engage with this process more deeply, it will be, it will be much easier. It will be much, much easier. Um, so it's just kind of like life. It's just kind of like life. Life can be very intense sometimes. Usually it's because we're struggling and resisting and fighting what's happening rather than surrendering to it. So you know, that's 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 the real stipulation. And and Bonnie works more intensely in person because she can do certain things in a different way. I know for you trained with her in person. I think your foundation training was all in person in Colorado. So you'll be able to speak to that. I only learned with Bonnie online. And since then I've, I've been at retreats and I've supported her. Uh, her workshops in person but um i did my training online and that was perfect for me it worked really well but ofa do you want to add anything about the difference between stuff in person and, and online or at all yeah you can say that in person is probably more intense in the sense that uh you know you can get people in your face there is yelling there is shouting there is uh you know when when 
people when when there are multiple people in one room, you can sense their energies anyway, and now it's intensified by the training and uh, and at the same time, uh, my experience because I've also been in online trainings, you get what you need through the internet. So the intensity in one on one is perhaps the fastest way to get you know, emotional stuff processed. And yet uh, the same thing happens online and uh, we give you more time because it is online. Yeah, nice. That's a great answer. Yeah. And and energetically, what I found with online is that the, the, the cold class has an energetic dynamic and we're creating a class, sort of an energetic sort of structure for the class that the transmissions come through, that the healing comes through. And that really develops and strengthens. And the benefit of doing the class online, I found for me, was that it improved my psychic tracking. Because in certain ways, learning this work in person is um, you've got more physical data there. The person is there in front of you on a body level. You're picking up more things. So for me, learning this work online, it meant that my psychic abilities got developed even more quickly. And then I could work, at, you know, I, I now work as a healer remotely. I never... You know, I trained as an acupuncturist, but most of my healing practice has always been with people elsewhere. And I just learned to be able to tune into them because that's what I learned on the foundations course. Um, yeah. So it has an advantage as well. Uh, I, I feel that's, that's interesting. Yeah. So you will help, help us work through our blocks so we can yes. succeed with this work if we really want to do this. Yes. Yes. That's what the course is designed to do. And then additionally to the course, I'm going to do a group, two group healings a month with everyone from foundations to, to go deeper and make your process faster of releasing those blocks. Um, that's why I love teaching the course. I really like teaching. I have a lot of fun with it. I'm a bit naturally a clown, but what I really love doing is, is seeing people really, really transform their issues and becoming happier and more free particularly free of very deep things. Often, usually I'm surprised in class to find out that you know, everyone has a certain kind of trauma or that there's someone with really deep issues is struggling with this. And the course becomes an environment where we're helping to work through and release and transform that. And that's, that's why I love teaching it because it's a space to see the divine work of very deep life healing. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um... There are there are more questions that are more on on the content than the uh, class itself. So gotcha. you'll tell me when you want to stop. Cool. Um, how do we explain to someone that their pain and suffering is self inflicted when they feel like nothing they do matters and that they're not good enough? Yeah. Well, you, I, I, I don't think you would explain this. This is the sort of thing that if somebody were to tell me that in the middle of my, like people did tell me that in the middle of, I had eight years of depression that started as a young adolescent and people would tell me, you know, just get through it. It's just your staff, you know, pull your socks up. And, and I, I wouldn't, I wasn't, that didn't make sense to me. That didn't make sense to me. And the, the idea that there's something wrong with you, like you're, you've got to, you know, this is your problem that you've, it's, it's something wrong. Um, that wouldn't have been helpful. I think if someone is in that place, uh, what we want to do is to meet it with love and compassion. We've all, we've all, you know, as far as I'm concerned, every human that I meet has stuff going on. And some people it's more intense at the moment um, in this lifetime. And it's just, it's just time. It's time to deal with it. Um, it's their path. And we want to meet it with a lot of love and listening, you know, someone in that space that they, they feel everything is, um, they're not good enough and, and that nothing to do matters you know i think a lot of what will be helpful there is not words but just care and love and really listening and being with them and that care and love can begin to go past the sort of tangles in their mind and their being where they really um, are shut down to love and it will begin to just hold them and soothe them and something will begin to respond to it and then over time you can have more of a, a conversation and, and, and go there um, but initially, people just need a lot of support and holding. And energetically, if I'm working with someone like that, I'll be bringing in a lot of light initially, really, really holding them in a lot of light and transforming. You know, there's all the issues there, but they're also just nurturing them at a soul level and bringing up all of this vitality in their body. That's what will initially needs to happen. They need to have a lot of support, energetic holding and support to begin to kind of 
open enough that we can actually process and, and, and work with those issues. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's very difficult when somebody's in that place, but actually you can still reach them and really help. But love, love and compassion is going to be a good starting point. Yeah. And then timing, they'll be ready when they're ready. Um, they may need to, 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 something may need to ripen there to ripen for release or ripen to wake up. Suddenly it's just, it's ready, it's time. And then they'll connect with someone or a process that's going to help them. Just a timing thing. Yeah. I apologize if I already read this question to you. I jump back and forth. Uh, so do we need to clear these tor uh, torture times before joining the class or would the class include this? Yes, the class is going to go into the deepest stuff, including very deep. That's what we call the dark night of the soul. We're going to learn to specifically work with that. We're going to work with past lives. We're going to work with dark forces. So that kind of a thing is going to be worked on in the class. I think bring your issues to class. That's how I think about it. It's like we've got pets and friends. Our friends are our issues. We want to bring all of our friends to class. And then class is going to, going to work with them. It's going to introduce them to the light. It's going to introduce them to these high level healing techniques. And we're going to actually move forward. Yeah, so bring all your issues to class. That's what I did, and it worked really well for me. Um, it was the thing that made the difference, yeah. There is a question about AI that I don't know if you want to take. What is your take on AI, the AI movement and the men trying to say they're women and wanting women to accept that they want to change things about women? Very interesting question that touches on lots of interesting energetic stuff. I think probably that's one for another time. Um, so yeah, ask me in class or ask me by email. Um, yeah, but I, I think it goes in. It, that's just a very long conversation as well. There's so many things there to go over. <laughs> okay, let's see. Um, so would it be similar to Las Vegas, uh, it, the Las Vegas event that we participated in the hotel? Um, I don't know if you're familiar with this, Chris. Uh, yeah. I'm not totally familiar with it, but I'm sure that the Las Vegas event was not a one-year event or ten months event. No, it was a it was a three-day workshop with the, with the Know Thyself program, um, and I think I know I was I was there, but it that was um, that was going into uh, some of the stuff, but actually that was more targeted to releasing your own conditioning and beliefs and emotional issues um if i remember right so actually it this program is more about it's that but it's also about learning to actively clear energy as a so you are learning to track and clear the frequencies and energetics of what's going on not just process and release emotions and beliefs which we were doing more of there as exercises yeah body's always clearing this stuff wherever she goes so energetically we were clearing yeah, and all the accelerators that were there were also helping people clear all of these interferences, but you weren't learning how to do that. You were just experiencing the clearings. This would be, you know, experiencing the clearings, but also learning how to do that and learning more of the way Bonnie works. So actually behind the scenes, as she said, yeah. But it was a cool event. I remember it very fondly and got to meet a lot of people there, including you, Pam. That was a real blast. Yeah, it was wild. Yeah, well. I mean, this, this class can, you know, someday be in like a... A university. It could be a it could it could be a university class when somebody would be brave enough to uh, to let it yeah. happen. It's, totally. it, it's a teaching. You really learn. Yeah. Okay. Yep. How can you surrender to anything when it's painful, hurting, disgusting, damaging? Sorry, I was reading someone's comment. Can you say it again? How can you surrender to anything when it's so painful, hurting, disgusting, and damaging? Something in you just becomes ready to wake up and become free. So surrendering to it is, is also, it's that place becoming open and free and remembering itself as love. And that's what all of you is calling for. Any place which is in real pain is really just calling for that love and freedom. But we can't hide from anything. There's nowhere to go. So we want to open and surrender it so that we can recognize who we are there. So that freedom and love can wake up as that, wake up as you. Uh 
There is a question, is the foundation course offered once annually? The answer is yes, because it is a 10 months class. And uh, there is a question, there, there are several questions about the replay. So I think that what we're going to do about the replay is we're going to put it on uh, we're going to put it on social media on the on the on the business web page so you can uh, re-listen there. But now that I'm thinking about it, Chris, I think I'm also going to send it to the emails of everybody that registered to this webinar, and okay. so it'll be available two ways. Yeah, nice, nice. Okay. Really nice. Feeling that we might be beginning to close up. Um, I've yeah. got if you, if there's any last minute questions you want to um, you want to ask me, that, absolutely. I can sort of feel it beginning to wrap up. So I'll read you one more thing. So if we're not able to take the class now, how do we? Oops, I lost it. How do we uh, say it scrolls as I'm reading it. Uh, yeah. How do we? Yeah, this question. Yep. Um, if we're not able to take the class now, how do we send love to ourselves, so to speak, when we feel an inner drain in ourselves that seems to be pulling us down? Um, yeah, somebody said, listen to the replay. That's a good answer. Um, connect with the light, the three stages today. Connect that place of pure light. Call that down through the whole of you, opening your being to it, calling it down, surrendering to that. Feel the place that's been lit up. Feel that place. So you track the air energy drain but then actually recognize there's an emotional place that's deeper let yourself get in touch with that and then surrender all of that to the divine surrender that to divinity pure divinity letting it totally surrender in that place and then that's how you can work with this as a process so you want to feel your feelings connect with the light and then surrender that place to the divine you can learn even to do this in someone else this could be a healing technique it is a healing technique but we go into more details about how to do that and the different components of the healing in the foundations program. I just wanted to give people a, a way of working with themselves that I could transmit in a, in an hour's time. Yeah. And it was a lot of fun. So I hope you really enjoyed it and got something from this. Um, regardless of whether you want to take the foundations at the moment. Um, I mean, if you feel very drawn towards it, it's, it's an amazingly life changing training that really gets into the deep stuff we're all holding and transforms it and gives you an ability to work with these energies, these beings and these realms to journey and expand your gifts and skills of tracking, clearing, journeying and bridging. Um, but I, I also just wish the best for you and, and, and take this method and, and, and apply it, use it, deepen into it. You know, these are a natural parts of ourself. Um, all of this is natural on some level. We just want to be yeah, and Chris, one one more thing before before we go. I think it's important to answer this one. Yeah. Are there any risks from taking this class? The risk and the reward piece is that it may bring up places in you that you didn't know were there and that you were actually trying to repress. So it could bring up different places in your psyche where you are resisting an issue like something like grief or sadness or loss that we all have. We all have all of these pockets of emotional places in our psyche. And the foundations program is actively trying to, to help us wake up to where these places are and to open them. And so they can be addressed and healed and processed and released. Um, but the energy will be trying to like, we're all these complicated little puzzles. And it's the energetics of the class are trying to kind of shift things so that something can open, the light can come in, we can do all this deep work, you can get clearings and healings, and then something can move forward in life. Something whole and strong and new can arise there rather than something that's like totally shut down and doesn't want to deal with it. So that's, so, you know, you have to be willing on some level to meet what's holding you back so that it can be transformed. And class will be energetic. I'll, I'll be trying to facilitate that for you the divine will be trying to do that. You, know, you took the class, now let's do the work. So you have to be willing on some level to um, to be able to, to meet yourself, to know thyself. And then part of the sweetness of that is we, we learn who we're not, the wounding, it wakes up and releases, and we learn who we are. We know who we truly are beyond all personality and space and time as freedom, pure freedom and love. 
it's not a story, it's the reality. We learn that as a reality in those places. We're all doing that. I'm doing that, Bonnie's doing that, Earth is doing that, you're all doing that. That's the whole path. So, and, and that can be scary. That can be scary, but it's the most important thing, at least for me, yeah, in my life. And somebody asked a question that I think is really good, so I'll just answer it. Do most people who take this become healers or have that intention up front? I would say no. Um, there are a lot of people who are healers who take the course or who want to become a healer, and that was my path, but that's not most people taking the foundation class actually don't want to be healers. They just want to develop themselves. They want to know who they are. They want to let go of their wounding and their trauma. Um, yeah. But if you do this, you will be able to work as a healer. You will have the skills. That's if, So if that was your desire, you could. And I would say it's a percentage of people. Maybe maybe 50% of them are healers and 50% of them aren't interested in, in doing that. Yeah. And that's my experience. I don't know if I feel you have a different sense of that, but for the foundations, I think that's the case. Yeah. Yeah, and, I, but, think that's, I think that's, that's a good estimate. Yeah. Very cool. Well, this has been a lot of fun. And thank you, Ofa, so much for hosting this and, and, and helping put this on. Um, and, you know, this has been a pleasure to meet you. And I look forward to those of you that uh, are taking the foundations and, and those of you who have already taken foundations. There's a couple in this class call that I, I know from a previous foundations call. So hello to all of you and look forward to seeing you there. And uh, have a wonderful, have a wonderful weekend, everyone. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Take care.